Buffers are solutions that resist changes in pH. Specifically, they resist the change in pH when you add a small amount of an acid or a base. And they can do this because buffer solutions contain a weak acid and its weak conjugate base. They contain an acidic component and a basic component. So if we look at the generic weak acid equilibrium, HA dissociating to give you H plus ions and A minus ions, you can see that we have a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. These are the species that have to be present in order for a buffer to work effectively. If you add a small amount of base to a buffer solution containing HA and A minus, the base will react with the HA. If you add a small amount of acid to this buffer, the acid will react with the A minus. In both of these cases, when you added an acid or a base, that OH minus or H plus didn't stay free floating in solution. It reacted with one of the components of the buffer and was used up in the reaction. And this means that those OH minus ions or H plus ions are not actually available to influence the pH directly. If we look at our generic weak acid dissociation, we can calculate the pH of our buffer. We can see that the H plus concentration, which is how we would calculate a pH, has to remain constant as long as the HA concentration divided by the A minus concentration, as long as that term stays relatively constant. And what we see in practice is as long as that ratio stays uh, between 10 to 1 and 1 to 10, the pH remains relatively constant. If you want to build a buffer, you need to add a weak acid and its weak conjugate base. So a common weak acid would be acetic acid. I'll abbreviate it with HAC. Its weak conjugate base is the acetate ion, but we can't add acetate ion without something else to go with it, so we would add something like sodium acetate. If we had a solution that is one molar in acetic acid and one molar in sodium acetate ion, we have a solution of weak acid with a common ion. Sodium acetate is one to one with the acetate ion, and if sodium acetate is one molar, that means the acetate ion concentration at initial conditions is also one molar. The acetic acid concentration is one molar, and initially the H plus concentration is zero. We can solve this expression for x and calculate the H plus concentration. You can either solve this the long way using the quadratic formula, or you can cancel out the plus and minus x terms. When you finally have an H plus concentration, you can calculate the pH. When you finally have your H plus concentration, you can calculate a pH, and the pH is 4.74. It's also possible to do this type of calculation in a more simple fashion, and it relies on the same assumption that we often use when doing an ice table. If we have a K value that is much smaller than our initial concentrations, we can say that the initial concentrations won't change very much by the time they reach equilibrium. And if we make this approximation, we can use what is known as the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And this Henderson-Hasselbalch equation can greatly simplify buffer calculations. Instead of doing an entire ice table, all you need is a pKa, and the initial concentrations of your conjugate base and your conjugate acid. And in the end, you end up with the exact same value for the pH.